So this is another big one. Um, basically, Florida has set up stipulations against children on social media. Mm -hmm. um, they're starting to make a bill basically that bans minors. Uh, I believe it's up until adolescence, like 15 or 14, from mm -hmm. using social media. Wow. You would have to get parental support or like, you know. Approval. Approval. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> yeah, basically have to get parental approval uh, in order to make a social media account. And all of the existing social medias that kids are on are just going to be deleted at the beginning of 2025, which is pretty far away. Well, I think this is probably a good idea. Yeah. But it's just Florida. So are other states going to follow? I would even suggest that 14 years old is not enough. Yeah. I, it would be ideal if kids weren't on social media until after high school. High school is hard enough. Mm -hmm. You get on social media and then there's the bullying aspect. The human ego has a lot of trouble with criticism. Now, I get criticized all day. <laughs> I know, yeah. And I'm fine. But I've put in a lot of work over the years to get to that point. You think a 15-year-old could handle the same criticism that I get? No. I don't think so. I actually have a friend whose daughter offed herself, 16 years old, because, well, I don't know all the details, but it had something to do with going back and forth with people on Twitter. So it's hard to absorb criticism. Yeah. The human ego is not built for it and so you have to evolve past the ego and that's not something a 15 16 not, not even a, a normal 25 year old can handle it's it's it takes a long time to be able to absorb criticism and people telling you that you're ugly and people telling you that you suck and people telling you that, you know, your talent is garbage. Yeah. You're not good at it. What if you're a guitar player and you're just on YouTube playing guitar and the comments are like, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You suck. Because people can, people have a battery in their back because they're hiding behind a keyboard and a monitor. So they're just flying off at the mouth. Yeah. You know? So that's beyond the sexual stuff that was mentioned in the article. Yeah. And predators and whatnot. <laughs> you didn't, this, these days you don't even have to try. You don't have to be looking for it in order to come across some M rated content or higher than that. You know, it's, I've like spoken to some parents like on the program or just in general. And they say the same things. They're like, the children are just being exposed to the world at earlier and earlier ages. Right. And it's a big thing because most children are not ready for the world at that age. They're just, they're just learning how it works. Right. And um, it needs to be a community thing. Like people need to actively, like if you realize a child is on social media, but even that's hard. But if you realize the child's on social media, like report it or ban it. But I feel like it's going to get to where the same thing with the uh, prohibition or like uh, <laughs> the whole marijuana thing. Mm -hmm. uh, like people are going to try to find loopholes around it. Like when you tell somebody they can't do something, yeah, they're going to do it. That's right. <laughs> and so if there was a way that we could make it make sense to these children 
I think it would help a lot, but I just don't have the answers for that. I know that I started about 16 years old, 15 maybe. Back then it was AOL Instant Messenger <laughs> and AOL chat rooms. Mm. And I definitely got busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back then it was ASL. Yeah. You go into a chat room and you say ASL, question mark. And people put their age, sex, location. You know, you know 20 year old female, Dallas, Texas. Right. And then based on you seeing ASL, then you go into the DMs. Back then it was called Instant Messenger. It wasn't called DMs. Mm -hmm. And then you go from there. And so if you evolve to a phone call, you evolve to a phone call. I've been on the phone with strangers, many of strangers, at 15, 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. You know? And I definitely had phone sex with quite a few women, <laughs> <laughs> probably older than me, with her husband in the other room. And that's at like 16, 17 years old. Mm. So should you ban social media for teenagers? It's probably a good idea. Because all a teenager thinks about... <laughs> Yeah. Is sex. It's one thing, yeah. And maybe, maybe career. Maybe. Alcohol, weed. This is what teenagers do. You know, they're exploring. They're exploring the world. Their hormones are going crazy. And social media is just the wrong platform for that growth. Yeah. So I think 18 would make sense. Get out of high school. Yeah. Get out of high school. You know. Man, if Instagram was around back then, I don't I I would have went nuts. Yeah. I would have got busy. Mm -hmm. I would have I mean, I would have created the best profile ever and I'd <laughs> be sliding into a girls DMs and you know. That's what 16 and 17 is like. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're shy, you can break your shyness by doing stuff like that. Some people are really shy in person, but they get behind that keyboard, they start letting loose. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Well, it's nowadays it's like, at least from what I experience, it's like, most of the personalities that are like huge on social media are just that they're just huge on social media. They have no social life whatsoever or like no credibility. Everybody doesn't speak with them or they don't have any friends outside of that right? because either they don't know how or they're just not good people <laughs> yeah. and they're able to hide it better on social media. <laughs> and so me it's like that's another reason why i wouldn't want children like on social media because they just build this different alter ego <laughs> right and right. it becomes their life right and so yeah i agree to it but i just hope that i don't know i hope that it's a strict law and i hope that it's like something that well you, you know it just dawned on me that, you know, there could be an ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. So they, they could be saying, oh, we don't want kids doing this because of sexual predators, etc. But it could be because there is a small demographic of teenagers getting rich. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay, there's some 15-year-old millionaires out there mm -hmm. because they figure out how to hack the algorithm and they sell something, they do something, and they they get rich. And what do you if if you're 15 years old and you got a million in the bank, do you want to continue high school? You're not. You're not going to. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> yeah, not gonna go to college. Yeah, and they're probably losing out. That's yeah, that's a big thing because they're probably losing out on a lot of money from children. It's mostly streamers. 
Like they're streaming and getting so much money. They don't need to go to college. They just sit home and play games all day or right. watch TV or act a fool in public. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, but you can't say anything. I mean, like they, they did it. They, <laughs> they're successful. Mr. Beast. Yeah. Mr. Beast has the biggest YouTube following in history, as far as I know. He started YouTube at like 13, 12, 13. Mm. But he yeah. was driven. Like He, he did, was driven. He, yeah. he hacked the algorithm. He studied it. That man, one of his videos, he, he would say the same word over and over again for like 24 hours. That's how driven that man was. And that's the thing. Like, that's all you have to do. You just got to find a niche and... Even if it's like the simplest thing, like I've noticed on social media, there's these kids that are just playing this game where they're like building blocks and every like or donation they get, the blocks get destroyed. They're like, no, no, I'm trying to go to sleep. I'm trying to go to sleep, please, please. And they'll keep building it, destroy, follow, it's destroy everything. So like whatever donation they get and people like to see that. So that's all that child has to do. That's his eight hours a day, just building blocks and then destroying it and getting donations like crazy. And I know you've heard of like the NPCs, like they are basically kids that act like they're NPCs, they're robots in right. the public and or at their house. And people just donate to that just to see them do something like you donate a specific amount just to see an action for them to do it. And then you just keep doing it and keep doing it because it's embarrassing or something like that. And so, yeah, that's it's just, just the weird part of Getting social. paid to act like a robot. Yeah. Yeah. I told Edwin, my nephew, you know, who just turned 11, if you're not rich by the time you graduate high school, you messed up. <laughs> There's so many ways to get rich as a kid. Like, quit the video games. You knock so it off. Just... Figure it out. Because <laughs> uh, having a lot of money is better than not having any. Yeah. Or having a little. And why not? Go for it. Until they... Because at some point, they're going to they're gonna close the door. At some point, government's going to close the door. Like, there's too many rich teenagers out here. Yeah. So get it while you can, I guess. Make use of it. Social media is the gift and the curse. Make it a gift. It's a gift for us. Yeah. You know, without social media, we're not sitting here right now. And none of this is here, you know? So we need social media to get the word out. Yeah, but at the same time, I guess not everybody needs it. Right. And that's like... 18 and up. <sighs> I just don't know how they're going to manage it, but I, uh, I'm i looking to hear from like the comment section or what people's opinion on it is. Cause, uh, like, yeah, li leave a comment underneath. Let us know. Absolutely. Jumpstart your head-to-toe healing journey with the Dr. Reese book trilogy. Peace Over Pain is the cult classic that explains how head-to-toe healing works and how the medical monopoly doesn't. Reverse the Cause lays out the root causes to over 60 chronic conditions. And Dinner with Dr. Reese is a unique cookbook that contains 100 recipes without the destructive poor four foods. Together, all three books set you on a path to head-to-toe healing. Get yours today on Amazon, Audible, or PeaceOverPain.com. Also, if you'd like to ask a question, tune in every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern for Dr. Reese Live.